So hello everyone, it's a great to be here and thank you for inviting me to contribute to this series of conversations between alumni and current graduate students of the UAL. My name is Teanos Yaraferas, I am an alumni of Chelsea College of Arts and I'm happy to be speaking today with Natuno Katasima. We are delighted to have this opportunity to share with you examples from our work and our experiences as part of this year's Graduate, graduate Virtual, Virtual Showcase. Hello everyone and hello Teano. My name is Natsuno Katashima and I'm a graduate student of BA Interior and Spatial Design also at Chelsea College of Arts. I'm very excited to be having this conversation with you today, Tiano. I'm excited too. So to go ahead and get started, please tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since graduation. So I graduated from Chelsea College of Arts in 2015. Um, I began my studies on the FDA interior design program, which was a two years program. And then I completed my studies on the third year of the BA interior design um, course. Um, so after I, I was, since I was always inspired by museums and their collections, when I finished my BA, I went on to um, study my MA on history of design at the Royal College of Art and the Victoria and Albert Museum. Currently, I'm based in New York, and I'm working as a researcher and coordinator at the MoMA Research and Development Department, organizing the MoMA R&D Salon series with Paola Antonelli. So together with Paola, back in February, we organized a panel um, conversation on the topic of dogs. And you may think, why dogs? So as friends, guides, workers, and companions, dogs are key members of our societies. We invited six fantastic speakers to discuss the perceived otherness of these species and imagine different ways of coexisting in an egalitarian interspecies world. The panelists looked at different perspectives from architecture, performance, ethics, and legal rights, and invited the audience to think about constructive forms of symbiosis, not only with other species, but also with each other. You can find the recording of the salon on the MoMA R&D website. So um, I find your final year project, Natsuno, fascinating. Please tell us more Thank about you. it. Yes, so I also tuned into your panel conversation as part of my project research, and I found the speakers different perspectives and the conversation evolving around the question of how to design for togetherness between dogs and people, very intriguing. So this was also the motive of my project. So the project brief was about re-engineering happiness within the Brunel Museum. Dogs contribute significantly to my personal happiness and for decades they've also been offering friendship and obedience to their human counterparts. However, although the human canine relationship is a very long lasting symbiosis, we know that dogs have high sensory abilities and they're also able to notice small details more than us. So the question that ar arose from this point was, can we be more dog? And this further evolved into the question, can a museum be more dog? So my project name BMD stands for Be More Dog as well as Brunel Museum Development and it explores ways in which the Brunel Museum could offer human visitors an experience to learn the art of being more dog. The final proposal aims to strengthen human canine bonds, challenge human visitors to revive forgotten senses and also to play with hierarchy between the two species. By encouraging interaction with their human counterparts it's also a playground that dogs can play in and invites a new kind of audience to the museum. So throughout the project, I actually enjoyed taking every opportunity of the project and relating them to the subject matter. For example, I chose a hands-on constructing method to make the building process more dog. And I used blue as the pre predominant color of the portfolio graphics for the narrative to be experienced through the dog's dichromatic vision. So that's, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. I, I really enjoyed your project, Natsuno, and, and I think it's very important that we see in your architecture this um, encounter between human and non-human agents, which is a shared um, concern among many practitioners today. And we see that this pandemic has certainly brought, uh, made more vivid how we are interdependent as how we are interdependent creatures so there is an urgency in designing for more than one species and for us humans to be more humble as creatures. So I find important um, in your, that your project invites us to rethink our relationship with our, with our environment and it encourages citizens to reimagine the ways that we share public space with other species as well as recognize our, prox our proximity to one another on this planet. 
I also really enjoy the idea of care and adaptation that we see in your vision and particularly in your early experiments where you really try to see how it is to see like a dog and see from their perspective. This addresses the lack of language, of shared language that we have and the fact that we know very little of, their experience, of the experiences of our fellow species as, well as we are trapped in our own perception of the world. Thank you so much. So I'm also intrigued to know what your final year project was about, if you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So my final year project was in collaboration with the Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, it was developed in parallel to the redesign of the Europe 1600 to 1815 galleries, which were part of the future plan program of the museum. So we were invited to explore the vast rooms and collections of the museum as walking cabinets of curiosities through the idea of promenade. I remember wandering in the museum for hours, observing the marble floors, the columns, the arches, the glass cabinets, the painted walls. I was startled by the works exhibited and their relationship with architecture. It was as if a whole new world was unraveling in front of me. So I began taking photographs of rooms, only of those that I could sense more strongly, and usually the ones where I could experience solitude and, and silence away from the crowds of the museum. Um, these photographs, taken at different hours of the day, documented shadows and reflections in the museum and re-described the spaces and, ob and objects. And, uh, my aim was to reveal life around them in unexpected ways and to touch on the essence of the museum, the life in its core. So as part of this project, I also created a short film in the v &A Ceramics Room 136, which is on the sixth floor at the very top of the museum. It's a room that not many visitors um, read to, and, and it's a huge, uh, it has a huge uh, glass rotunda on the center of the room. So the short film I made is a time-lapse video, which, um, which, was taken, which was recorded in the duration of a day, and it celebrates materiality and light. The film can be viewed on my website, and it was a great honor for me that in the end it was presented in the VMA as part of one of the museum's Friday and late events. So tell me, Natuno, next, um, what is the most memorable moment of your undergraduate journey? So relating to your final year project topic about Cabinets of Curiosities, we also did a project in first year titled Cabinet of Curiosities. So this project was about um, a competition to design and install a cabinet to store gifts left by visitors in the college guest house where the artist and residents stay. And for my design, I was inspired by the geometric grids of the Stein Hopkins parade ground just outside the courtyard in Chelsea, creating a link between the two spaces, interior and exterior. I also incorporated the four major course disciplines offered in Chelsea at the time which were graphic design, communication, interior and spatial design, fine art and textile design, arranging the initials to, um, of each subject area to spell the word gift. And I was lucky enough to win the competition, which then led the opportunity of constructing and installing the design to the guest house. There was an event to celebrate the unveiling of the cabinet as well, which was really a memorable moment for me as it was the first time to see my design come to life. And I really want to thank all the tutors who supported me throughout the project and also the CCW business and innovation team for making the project possible. And of course, to the college technician, Philip Rutter, who has been a great help in the building process of the cabinet. So that's my memorable project of the, of the course. Congratulations on this project. It's fascinating. Thank you. Reflecting back, what's the most memorable moment of your undergraduate journey? Um, so I remember that one of my favorite projects was my third year thesis uh, that was titled Cañon, um, its ruins and the value of hearing their voices. So Cañon is a village in the northern part of Greece, which today is uninhabited and its architectural remains um, are in a ruinous condition. So my aim was to draw attention to the value of an architectural examination of a ruin by modern Greek society. I visited the village during the summer months of July and August, and then again in December in 2014, and recorded the radical transformation of the houses. Um, they were sinking in the earth, returning their borrowed materials as the period was characterized by intense rains. So I, I started taking photographs. I photographed the, the houses that 
have had the most powerful voices and which were still standing in the village. And I then narrowed down my research to the ones that I could find their owners. And then I recorded their stories and memories from the time when they lived in the in the houses and paired those with, with the photographs of what's left behind. Throughout the essay, I was questioning the reasons that brought the village to its ruinous condition. As architecture has always been interwoven with humans, why would it be abandoned by its own people? So the narratives that I put together were inspired by the writings of, uh, Win of uh, Winfield Jorsevald, and in his writings, these endless images become alive through long sentences with the use of minimum adjectives, triggering the reader's imagination. To analyze my findings and support such an investigation, I studied architectural theory of ruins, and throughout the essay, um, I discussed the political and cultural background which is hidden and therefore can be revealed with such an examination. The essay addressed how a ruinous village should not be considered non-existent and should only be reimagined. The reason this project remains close to my heart is because it was the first time I, perform, I performed an extensive individual study. I'm grateful for the encouragement that I received from my supervisor, Sibola Sector, and it was a key project for me because it led me to apply for the MA in History of Design at the RCA in the VNA. So I wanted to ask you next, Natuno, what has surprised you about preparing this year's online showcase? Well, like many others, I'm sure, I was very much looking forward to celebrating the end of the journey through a physical show. However, although the experience may be completely different, the di digital showcase is actually more beneficial in some respects, I find. So it was fairly simple to upload their work. No physical resources are required, so it's more sustainable. It's also globally accessible and our work will be showcased for a year, which is much longer than a physical show. So in my head, it's always been um, the idea of a degree show has always been a physical concept. So it was a surprise to discover these advantages that could shape the future degree shows very differently. And a question I would like to ask you is, if you could go back to the time when you graduated from UAL, what advice would you give to yourself? So I think the, the first thing that comes to my mind is to look for as many opportunities as possible to collaborate with other people and with other practitioners. I think we agree in this that it is greatly beneficial exchanging knowledge when working with people that come from interdisciplinary fields, such as working with sculptures, um, scientists, sociologists, and so on. I would, I would say look for opportunities that are hands-on and don't be afraid to take on projects that seem initially challenging and that cause discomfort because you feel like uh, you have very little experience. It's this friction that really pushes us forward. Something else I, 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 I know we hear a lot about, but I can't stress enough, is how important it is to develop your network of people. It took me a while to realize this, I have to admit, as I seem to prefer working with fewer people, those I felt comfortable with. And at times I would also cut links with other people um, absorbed in my own questions and uncertainties. Your fellow students and tutors are your precious contacts for anything you might encounter in the future. And they would always want to learn from you and, and support you in your new ideas and um, in your ideas and new experiments. So the last thing I would also say is to be curious. This is something that I have learned, learned while working with Paola, who has become a strong role model for me. Have, man, have many questions for topics in all directions. Develop scenarios for debate and try to take them as far as you can through your design process in order to arrive at a logical conclusion, which will reimagine the future and be for the service of society. So before we end, I wanted to ask you, Natsuno, what are your plans for the upcoming months? So since finishing my degree, I have been taking on self-driven projects and further evolving my interest in design. Um, as the whole world is facing an unprecedented challenge, I'm also challenging myself as a graduate designer to really reflect on what I can apply the skills I've gained from the course to. And, but this doesn't necessarily mean that I'm narrowing down my interest from interior and spatial design, but more towards expanding on what I've learned from the course and discovering new and personal directions. Um, I think this is probably because throughout my time at Chelsea, I discovered that I have multidisciplinary interests from spatial design to other categories such as graphic design. And personally, I see a potential of these subjects combining into something unique. Um, I've not 
yet reached the clear path, but I'm excited to see where this post-graduation exploration process will take me in the next couple of months. And I also agree with you that um, it's important to keep in touch with my peers and my tutors for networking as well as for, you know, future friendship, <laughs> future connections. Mm. And I'd also like to ask you finally, what's on your horizon? So I, I agree with you that we are living in a very complex reality and, and we are uh, living in extreme conditions that, that seem to follow a sequence of, of events that challenge humanity. It's an ongoing ex exploration for me, learning as I go along in the practice of curation and design, and it seems that I will keep turning to both. When I practice on one instead of the other, it feels like it gives me a better perspective for both fields. Um, I enjoy working with spaces and I love discovering and creative, creating spaces where people can engage and, and exchange stories and experiences. So we will have to wrap up now. Thank you, Natsuno. It has been a great pleasure talking with you. And I personal, personally also want to thank Civil Left Sector, Colin Priest and Takako Hasegawa for their support throughout my journey. I'm very glad to be part of UAL's vibrant community. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Me too.